Hello my friends, welcome to Pro Arm Strings. I'm Henriette and this is lesson two in the Learn to Play the Violin with the Crickbomb Method uh, course. It's good to see you back today. Of course we are going to continue our learning from where we left off in lesson one but we're also going to review what we've learned in lesson one and try to improve on your bow hold and your violin hold and you will find that we will do that quite a lot in the next couple of lessons because we want you to set yourself up for success by having really good uh, postures, really good positions of your left hand and your right hand. So let's start with the bow today and let's tighten it. Remember we undid the bow when we left off yesterday so now we're going to use that little screw at the end of your bow, at the heel end of your bow, to tighten it and then you want to tighten it again until you've got about a finger width space between the hair and the stick. And let's get your rosin out now and put some rosin on. And again I'm going to cover the bow with my left thumb and I'm going to put the rosin on starting at the heel and I'm just going to wipe it across a couple of times before I move on to the next section. And this way we'll keep going just with a gentle pressure onto that rosin so a little bit of it comes off and you will probably notice when you've got some white powder coming off that rosin there. So we're rosin it all over lovely job. The bow is sorted. Now let's pick up your violin and put your shoulder rest on. So you put it on by hooking it over one side and then the other so that it looks like a smiley face when you've got your violin upside down. So you always want to aim for this curve to go in the opposite direction of that curve. So I'll show you once again when it's not right. When it's not right the curves go the same way you see so that's not correct and when you've got it right you put it on this way and you've got it across about the widest width of your violin there we go let's just test that on your shoulders and to see if that sound if that feels okay there we are all right good stuff so that's all set up nicely now let's tune your strings so whether you have a tuning app or an electronic tuning device or pitch pipes or um, a tuning fork, it really doesn't matter. Um, but we want to see if we can tune your violin a little bit each day so that even when it fluctuates, when the tuning fluctuates a little bit, um, you can get it back in tune every day. And you'll find as you tune more frequently, your violin will stay better in tune, although I've said it last in the last lesson and I'll say it again, the violin is a natural product so it does sometimes, for no reason whatsoever, might go out of tune. Not to worry about that when that happens. So here is your G string and we said, actually let's go over that first today, the strings are called G, D, A and E. G, D, A and E. So I'm going to tune my G string first. So let's hear it. There we are. And you may use either the big pegs here. This is the peg for the G string. You can just follow it and see how it goes. Uh, be very careful when you tune with those big pegs and always loosen the pegs first before you tighten them because they are sometimes a bit sticky and if you tighten it as you first go it might go way too tight because it sticks a bit and then suddenly goes too far and you may snap your strings so be careful always to loosen it first before you then tighten it. Now if you have a good look at these pegs they have got a conical shape which means that this end is wider than this end. That means that if you push your pegs into the peg box more, they will hold better because they get a little bit bigger towards that side and then they will stick a little bit better. So when you tighten your pegs, 
always push it in at the same time so that it will hold better. You won't be the first person to whom this might be happening is that when you tighten it, ping straight back. So the, the, the thing you can do to help that is to push the peg into the peg box further to, to make it hold a little bit better. So this is one way of tuning. Another way is if you've got fine tuners here, which I would recommend, um, it makes it much easier because you tune by pushing down a little lever, if you see what, how that works, if you've got those adjusters. Uh, and they are a much more fine way of tuning, so you tune much less far. So if your string is way out of tune, I'd recommend you tune on the pegs here. If it's only a little bit out of tune, use the little adjusters at the end there. So now, let me play you the D string, so you can check if your D string is in tune. <laughs> string but you might also tune by plucking the string there we are now let me play you your A string Like my A string, it sounds like this. All right. Stop these vi this video frequently if you need more time to tune, and then replay it again for the next string. That's all fine. And let's play your E string now. We've got our violin tuned now, we've got our bow ready to play and we've got our shoulder rest on. Let's get started on the bow. Now, yesterday we said to hold the bow properly, you'll need to relax your hand as much as you can. And we're going to promote that relaxation every lesson, you will find. Um, so I'm just going to shake that hand and make sure it feels really nice and floppy. And then I'm going to end up with a little ring again between my thumb, which is bent, and my middle finger. Now I'm going to open up a little gap and that is where the bow is going to go in and my thumb finds this little place here where you've got I've got a little bit of space, tiny bit of space between the frog, the heel of the bow here and this rubber uh, protection and that's where I'm going to put my thumb. So be careful you don't put your thumb into this little niche here but go right there. And then have your middle finger opposite, just like you had it earlier on. There we are. Pop your ring finger down. Pop your little finger on the side edge. And your index finger goes a space away from your middle finger. So I've got a, about a finger width space here. And about a finger width space here between my fingers. And these two fingers are together. Take your time because we want to promote good habits right from the start. So you want to just think about this for a moment and just double check that it's all in its proper place before you do some bow exercises. And again, we're promoting flexibility of your wrist here. So wave your bow gently like that. Lovely. And let's have some windscreen wipers. There we go. And that might today still feel quite unfamiliar, which is fine because there isn't any other movement in everyday life where you use your hand like this. Okay, so give it a bit of time for that to feel more familiar and to develop that position of your hand slowly. Lovely job. Okay, let's do some more waving. 
and let's do one more windscreen wiper practice awesome very well done let's put the bow away now for a moment and let's pick up your violin and we're just going to continue with the work that we have done in lesson one and what I'd like you to do is to put this little button that you can find there into this little dent in your neck here right there and now give your violin a little push towards the left so that it slides over your collarbone to about there so let's imagine a straight line in front and let's imagine a straight line on the side and your violin is about in the middle okay lovely now can you check for me that your violin is neither too high up and nor is it too low down and the correct position for your violin is if you imagine a little ping pong ball and you put it right here it will roll ever so slowly this way so if your violin's too far up your little ping pong ball will come at you straight away won't it and if your violin is too low down it will roll off that way so find it a position that is just above horizontal and gradually we'll refine that but let's let's sit it here for today shall we and then you want to think about the angle in this plane here you want it to so that your E string is slightly lower than your G string so it's not flat like that but it's slightly angled towards the right hand side towards the E string side think again G D A E I'm very mindful of the fact that all these uh, words are new to you so we'll come back to those time and time again and as you progress you'll find this becomes easier because there's a lot of things new things to learn but you're doing great even thinking about that angle of the violin already so with your left hand you can hold the violin here and now let's pick up the bow let's see if you can do that with one hand and let's find that little ring again that you had like that open it up Put your fingers down in more or less the correct position please don't fret if you find that very difficult to find right now with one hand that will also develop okay and now today let's start on the e string and we are going to bow long bows and so i want you to make your bows as long as you can start starting right here at the heel of the bow and following it through all the way to the point of the bow here we go I would like you to do a lot more bowings on each of the string so aim for about 20 or so uh, bow strokes that's when you get the most practice out of it so let's do a bit more E string playing brilliant brilliant so now let's work on what we call straight bowing when we think about bowing is that the bow goes like this but actually in fact it goes forward and back so if you find it's if you find it very difficult to reach the point of the bow it may well be that when you bow your arm goes to the side too much like that you see i can barely find the point of the bow now so my hand if you can see has ended up about towards my side you see so now I want you to try and practice stretching that arm forwards and that feels very strange at first so let's do that here we go on the E string again and straighten your arm straighten it forward there we are now you can see I've ended up about here and when I've ended up about here straight in front of me it meant that my bow could stay on the string parallel to the bridge that's what we're aiming for um, much easier there can you see that 
Now, if you are about in the middle here and it slips across the fingerboard here, if the bow slips across the fingerboard right here, it means you are still not going forwards enough with your arm. Okay, so let's do that again. Point your arm forwards, stretch it. There, and back. And try it again, stretching your arm forwards. Lovely job. Now let's go on the next string to the left, so the second string from the left, which is the A string, and we'll do the same thing. So you try and avoid going this way with your arm. Instead, you're trying to reach forward with your arm. You can try it dry if you like, so you go this way, which is completely counterintuitive for most people. We always say bowing goes like that. So forward with your arm. Um, here we go, on the A string, and... and I bet you that is getting a little bit straighter. Now, you, uh, it may well be that it takes more than one lesson to get really, really straight, and that is totally normal. So pra progress on the violin is often quite slow, and it's not until a week later that you look back and think, oh, did I just improve that gradually? So don't be surprised if you find it very tempting to go sideways with your arm this lesson and maybe next lesson and perhaps the next lesson after that as well uh, because in violin playing what we learn is patience. Okay, let's go on to the D string now and let's do the same exercise. You aim to go forward with your arm and the D string is the second string from the left hand side. Off we go. as long as you can. So try to avoid this. See if you can use the whole bow. Starting right at the heel, this end of the bow. We'll do the D string again and then go all the way to the point. Stretch it. string furthest to your left and we'll do the same thing again. Now this time I'd like you to think about your shoulder and to try and leave it in its lowest position when you play. Here we go. playing will sound a lot better than it did in the previous lesson so well done you've made really good progress now today we're still practicing the techniques that get you going and I think from the next lesson we will be using the book so if you haven't already got the Crickbone violin book please get it as soon as you can now I've put the link in the description below so you can uh, be properly prepared for when we start using the book. Thank you very much for sticking with me right till the end of this video. I very much look forward to seeing you in lesson three. Goodbye. <laughs>